player's asleep. Did he fall asleep? <laughs> oh, sorry. I don't know. No, he's sorry, on yeah. his phone. He's <laughs> like fun oh, Joe Biden. Biden. He's, he's, <laughs> he's, he <laughs> he's scrolling. It's literally. Geez. I want people to understand something. I'm here having fun, but as long as it's fun, it's fun. When it becomes something that I'm not comfortable with and saying something bad, I don't do that. And the minute it goes that way, I'm out of here. I, I, I guess that's funny. What are the, what are the ages of the uh, people that you're coaching, guy? Rick, don't leave. Are you really leaving, Rick? Don't do it. Oh, no. Thank you for all the respect. We lost Rick Flair, everybody. I love you, Rick. Thanks for doing this. I'll see you afterwards. No, you're good. You're good. We love you. Make some noise for Rick Flair, everybody. Come on. So, Kill Tony is probably one of the most entertaining and popular live comedy shows at the moment. Their clips go completely viral. And for anybody that watches, it's pretty clear what the show is about. However, recently, Tony Hinchcliffe invited former WWE superstar Ric Flair to the show and it did not go as planned. Now, obviously, there's been many, many intense and awkward moments on the Kill Tony show, but this was the first time that an actual guest that was invited by Tony himself stormed out of the show and was mad and complaining about how you're not supposed to make fun of people. And a lot of people in the comments were defending Rick, saying how nice of a person he was for not wanting to trash the comics, but I don't know. After rewatching the whole thing, I, I feel like it's a mix of different things. For example, Ric Flair was completely hammered, he was wasted, and it was pretty tough trying to understand what he was saying. Not only that, but he also didn't know what the show was about and the insane things that comics were about to say. And I guess for that, I do blame Tony. But at the same time, I do think he was a little bit unprofessional. So in this video, we'll take a look at the buildup, everything that happened, all those awkward moments that led up to that final moment when he walked out and left the show. So let's get started. You can tell me no all night long, but I'll be up. <laughs> hey. Hey, 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 if you if you want evidence, I got a picture. <laughs> no, seriously. Why would I slow down? We're dying to the left and to the right. <laughs> Not tonight. On the show, Rick, he writes and performs yeah, a I'm, new 60 I'm, I'm seconds. Funny. Yeah, you are. You are. We're gonna get. We're gonna get more. From Rick, more from Rick Flair coming up right around the corner. Well, hey, you know what? Let's hey, get some more hey, panelists hey, up here. Hey. I'm gonna bring up some guests. Make some noise for Shane Gillis, Mark Norman, and Ari Shafir, everybody. Uh, can I just say that I like the Hawaiian shirt because that set reminded me of Maui. <laughs> ah. Because it sucked. It was a tragedy, Hans. It was Sorry, a tragedy. Guys. I mean, yeah, usually you're so funny. What the f just happened there? Um, I don't know. I I like those jokes. Maybe it's too. You've been, uh, get, you've been getting some white. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You get soft, dude. I uh. <laughs> get comfortable, content with that white. <laughs> and I'm not a Ric Flair fan or a pro wrestling fan, so I'll try to be as unbiased as possible. But right away, you can tell that he came into the show already hammered and then started drinking more, which again, it's not that big of a deal because the man can really hold it down. Even though it was hard to understand him, he was still up there holding it down. The first 10 to 15 minutes of the show was pretty good. This was when uh, Tony Hinchcliffe introduced Ric Flair. The crowd welcomed them very well and even allowed him to share some of his stories. And you could tell that Tony was on edge right from the start because Brian Radman tried to troll him by playing the all-star song and Tony wasn't having it. He turned to Brian and basically said something along the lines of like, don't do that. That's not cool. And then Brian was like, all right, all right, I'm sorry. Which was obviously nothing compared to what was about to come. Now, this is what's very interesting to me because if you look at the beginning, it was clear that Rick was willing to play and take some shots at some of the comics, but something happened that changed him because he's definitely familiar with the concept of roasting people. I mean, he was a pro wrestler for a, for a long, long time and he even had his own roast show. Obviously it was pretty cringe and nothing like an actual roast would be like, but he is still, he knows the value behind roasting people and putting up a show. Because again, he actually roasted the first comic that came up. I don't know if he did it on purpose, but Rick basically told him that he himself had never done that bad of a job, then kind of regretted and apologized. And then after that, he said, hey, I'm just saying the truth. 
<laughs> what the hell? Ric Flair, you just watched one of our uh, future stars, one of the regular people that have built a career on this show, have a really, 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 really rough set. Do you have any words of advice? You, you're, you're the goat. You've had a rough night of work before, right? <laughs> I have, but I'm, I'm not that rough. <laughs> 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 Hans, you're in the position. Who do you think you're going to get challenged by next I, week? I apologize, sir. <laughs> no, you don't have to apologize on this show. You're We're not a POW. Camp. To... You're not that, problem, exactly sir. personal. Woo! Uh, I owe you everything, and uh, this is a big opportunity no, for me. This is even sadder. Jesus Christ, dude. It's not <laughs> groveling, dude. Stand up for yourself. Spin the <laughs> face. The <laughs> flavor respects that. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> myself the ruckiest man <laughs> Hans Kim next week you're challenged I, I, I'm supporting you I'm just telling you the truth <laughs> <laughs> absolutely ladies and gentlemen one more time for Hans Thank Kim you. there he goes everybody the show has begun now to be fair to him there is a chance that since he was hammered he thought it would be a good idea to try and roast somebody he did it and then didn't like how it felt after seeing everybody else start to dogpile the comic, which is the whole point of the show. But whatever, things started to change a little bit after that and not for the best, because I don't know if it's a combination of Ric Flair drinking more alcohol or the fact that they actually brought up more comics that were actually bombing, but it was a perfect combination for great entertainment. And you could argue that the concept of Kill Tony is pretty ruthless, especially to up and coming comics, but also it does provide an insane opportunity to get massive exposure and to actually practice jokes in front of comics who, for the most part, do want to help you out in a way. So you could argue that it's a fair exchange and even people like Post Malone who are not comics have handled that thing very well or at least better than Rick at this point. Now, keep in mind that regardless of how liked he is, Rick Flair is, he was still kind of being a bad guest at that time because up to that point, again, he was wasted. He was learning his words, couldn't really understand what he was saying, interrupting other people, and then just kind of holding the whole show back in a way. At some point, even the comics around him were just kind of uh, trying to ignore what he was saying and hopefully trying to move on. Hey, has she, hey, has she ever been the same? Uh, <laughs> no, I haven't been the same. I don't know. <laughs> Oh my God, what, are, what kind of a rectal exam is that? <laughs> ben, you're getting a big joke book, congratulations. So cool. And now this is when things start to take a weird turn because if you're Ric Flair and you're not liking the situation that you're in, I'm pretty sure you can find a hundred different ways to get out of that situation that don't involve just being rude, ignoring the whole set, the whole show while staring at your phone for like four straight minutes, even making other comics and people think that he was falling asleep, which they obviously pointed out. By the way, if you like what you're seeing so far, do me a huge favor and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. It helps out so much and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I wish I was your aunt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Her name but was she, she's got more Netflix credits than I do, but she had to be on the confession killer. Do you, do you normally get laugh, laughter? Retirement, <laughs> 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 don't like some people. <laughs> they, don't, they don't. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> players asleep. Did he fall asleep? <laughs> oh, sorry, I don't know. No, he's sorry, on yeah. his phone. <laughs> he's on his phone. Okay. He's, <laughs> he's like fun oh, Joe he Biden. He's, he's, <laughs> oh, he died, he's for Daniel oh, Shepard. Oh, that's Ric Flair. God damn it. God damn it. Oh, like you would have done good if you knew? <laughs> no. That would have done worse. God damn it. What did he say? What did you think that was your dead aunt? He said that. that there's, <laughs> there's something kinky about all your heroes you diminishing you, though. You know? I mean... Uh, kind of hot. I'm though, getting right? off on this. <laughs> yeah, this I get it. Thank you. No, you're, you're, hey, you're, you're not really you're incredible. Thank you. Hey, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. Hey, guys, guys. Woo! I didn't even guys. mean to say woo that first time. Guys, I'm guys, just inspired. Shut up, Whoa. Daniel. Whoa. I want people to understand something. I'm here having fun, but as long as it's fun, it's fun. When it becomes, um, 
something that I'm not comfortable with and saying something bad, I don't do that. And the minute it goes that way, I'm out of here. I will never, ever embarrass anybody or humiliate anybody. The minute that happens on this show, I'm out of here. You're not going to do that. We're going to no, do that for no, no. you. You're the good no, cop. No, no, no. Daniel no. just embarrassed himself. I'm not, I, I'm not the good cop. I respect these people. You guys get it? <laughs> you shouldn't. You have paid my... You have paid... You have made... Obviously, we don't know if he did that on purpose or just to try and ignore them. Or maybe somebody was in the crowd from his team watching what was, what was going on and decided to text him, you know, in the middle of the show, telling him to get the out and just to denounce everything that was being said and to trying to not get canceled now we can't tell if he was actually listening to them roasting him while he was on his phone but it was after that moment that his personality and his attitude actually started changing and then started going on his first rant about how if he didn't like something that was being said or he felt disrespected that he was just going to leave which i don't know if that's the best way to handle things because up to that point he was pretty okay with people making fun of other comics, of other people, the crowd. But once Luis J. Gomez started making fun of him being on his phone, and then the stand-up comic did as well, and then the crowd started laughing at their jokes, that's when he started to not like that very much. But what I think definitely triggered him was kind of a misunderstanding because, in a way, he unintentionally made a funny joke because the whole time that he was down looking at his phone, obviously there was a comic doing a set and all that stuff, he was not the best, he was actually pretty bad. And then after a while, Tony actually asked Ric Flair what he thought about the guy's set and his comedy, to which Rick responded with, the guy's awesome, I like him, he's great. And obviously the crowd thought that he was joking because he had taken shots at somebody before that, and then now he was being sarcastic. But Rick wasn't being sarcastic, he literally didn't pay attention the whole time and then just said some random compliment, which obviously didn't make any sense. So he took it as the crowd laughing at him instead of laughing with him and then started going on to another rant about being mean or whatever. Do you know how many people are bullied and hurt by comments? <laughs> no, you get it? It's like a... Social media has made the world crazy. <laughs> what the I, f maybe I should have sent, I, I probably should have sent you an episode to watch before... Uh, <laughs> We make you know, fun of people. Thank you, Ric Flair. You it's really good. Saved well, me I, don't, I don't make fun of people. You don't have and, to. And it, uh, I'm ready to leave in that one minute, guys. No, don't so leave. I love you. I am. Don't I am. leave, Rick. No, don't leave. No, you hang know why? No. I'm uncomfortable with the format. I appreciate the opportunity. No, come it's on, just Rick. Me. I no. will never, ever. Yo, you did so bad, Ric Flair. <laughs> Damn, dude. Oh, my God. <laughs> Damn. Nice go. This is a fever dream. There is no humor in the world that makes fun of people. Guess what? I, I apologize. I'm not one of them. No, you're good. You don't have to. No, I'm not apologizing. I'm, I'm not an unusually fight. horrible I will, I man. will have fun, but I won't make fun. And listen, once again, I don't think this is 100% Rick's fault because Tony Hinchcliffe himself did admit that he didn't tell him what the show was about and what to expect. And if you're a massive pro wrestling fan like Tony Hinchcliffe is, I feel like you would uh, know better than to put somebody like Ric Flair in a position to be in the middle of some of the most savage comics in America and then just uh, try to play cool while they say some of the wildest things ever. I mean, I know that he's older and retired, but it's not like he's Ron White. He's still a brand, I would assume. So with all that being said, if you do want to leave a show and you're not liking it, it's totally fair and you should leave. But then to try and get on a high horse and lecture everybody on your way out about how what they're doing is not right and what's right from wrong, especially while being hammered at a comedy show, is not the best look. I don't know how Ric Flair and Tony Hinchcliffe met, but it's very clear that Tony is far from a clean comic. And if they actually got drunk the night before, like they said, I feel like... Tony's humor would have came up in the conversation and kind of hinted him towards what's about to come the next day. So it did seem like he was actually upset. Even when he was leaving, when he was standing up, I think he told Tony that he didn't think that was funny at all. And then Tony was just responded with, uh, oh, you're okay, man, or something like that. You are here with Ric Flair. You are yeah. a wrestling coach. Uh, how does it oh, feel to uh, have I'll a performance you. like that in front of Ric Flair? <laughs> no, hey. Um... Actually, to be honest with you, 
I respect that very much. My son was a great amateur wrestler. This is why I'm leaving after I say this. No, 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 stop, stop, no, 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 I have more respect for people that take their time to support any youthful athletic event. My son was a great amateur wrestler. He died of a heroin overdose. Oh. And two was on 13. I don't, I don't hear that. I'm over that because I can tell you right now, from personal experience, and because I believe it in my heart. That's you ever had Asian? <laughs> I, I guess that's funny. Rick, don't leave. Are you really leaving, Rick? Don't do it. Oh no. Thank you for all the respect. We lost Rick Flair, everybody. I love you, Rick. Thanks for doing this. I'll see you afterwards. No, you're good. You're good. We love you. Make some noise for Ric Flair, everybody. Come on. Thank you all for all the respect. But I, I'm, I will never sign up to make fun of people that donate their time. I won't. Oh. I Look. swear to God, I respect you all, and thank you for coming out. I can have fun. I will never make fun of time of people that donate their personal time <laughs> to making children better. Ric Flair, everybody. The legend, the nature boy. Now, the final thing that upset him the most and actually made him walk out of the show, it, it, it's pretty reasonable and, and it's fair because, I mean, at that point, I think it's been over 40 minutes. He wasn't feeling the vibe, wasn't really engaging with all the jokes and uh, wasn't feeling it. So he then starts going on, telling a story about his son who passed away from a, an overdose and then the band starts playing sad piano music, which obviously made the crowd laugh, burst out laughing. And that was what did it for Rick. And obviously he didn't think that was funny at all. And once again, you can't really blame him for that if he didn't know what the whole show was about. Because if you do show that video alone with no context to somebody that has no clue what uh, Kill Tony is or that type of comedy, they would probably look at that video and think it was the worst thing they've ever seen. And uh, that everybody in that room is an evil person. And at the end of the day, inviting somebody like Ric Flair on the show, it's already a good joke in itself. It's like back in the day when uh, they would make YouTube videos and they would show older people music like from Ex Extentacion and all that stuff and they would just freak out listening to the lyrics. And it's essentially what happened at the Kill Tony show. I don't know, but once again, I do think Tony was a little bit responsible for what happened, for not telling Rick exactly what to expect, especially if he is an older uh, man. But I also think Ric Flair could have handled it way better. I mean, if you didn't like what was going on and didn't agree with it, you could have faked stage an emergency and had somebody to, to come in and rescue you and get you out of there. Instead of making it known why he was leaving, trashing their style of comedy, and that the show that is his entire livelihood, he didn't like it. it. It's crazy. And if you add the fact that at some point he was clocked out and uh, not paying attention, he's kind of the George Jenko of a uh, comedy podcast. I'm obviously kidding. And I do think both of them have some type of responsibility that they have to take for what happened. But it was very interesting because people were actually split on this. Some, again, thought that Rick was 100% on the right and that he was a nice person. And other people like Luis J. Gomez were actually trashing him after he left and made some pretty savage jokes about him. Which one of you mother played that music? It was, uh, that was John Deese <laughs> yes, over there. Yeah. That was the guy that was, that was the guy that was late. Which one of you monsters? Rick Flair yeah. has a point. This show is demeaning. It really is. <laughs> it really is. Look at me, dude. Why don't I we tried have to warn him. I warned him. I warned him. I warned him, but I, I warned him seven beers ago, which was the problem. I should have warned him right before. The nature boy, there's no nature in here. <laughs> Tony, Tony's mad at me. Come on up. No, I'm not. Let's not make that the theme. We have a I'm format not, on this I'm show. Yeah, Louis fine, 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 oh fine, my fine, God. Fine. I was I wasn't making fun of Ric Flair that much. I feel like we were mild. No one even knows that You're that's, the one a, who that's ruined a fucking it. You really thing. Did. I didn't ruin it. The piano guy ruined it. Piano that's guy it. definitely ruined it. Piano guy ruined it. Let's move forward. We move forward here. I'm the boss. Ric Flair really the rhythm of this room. Yeah, dude. Jesus Christ. We can all agree what? now that he's gone, it's so much better now, isn't it? I mean, no. Jesus Christ. No. No, it's not. 
No, no, no. Oh, oh, it was so much Jesus better when Ric Flair was here telling weird stories. Do Ric Flair songs? Yes. Yes, it was. Lewis, Ric Flair songs. Ric Flair songs. Oh, okay. Thank you, guys. Come on. Good. His son got out easy. So disappointed. How much right. I wanted the love him. I wanted the love him. <laughs> Everyone here was like, don't meet your heroes, you know? All right. Yeah. Lewis. Yeah. This is the, uh... Once again, the lineup for that show was filled with complete savages. So naturally, after Rick was gone, they basically showed him how he was wrong when he said that there was no humor in making fun of people. Shortly after that, Louis J. Gomez turned into a complete savage and started making jokes that if Ric Flair heard as he was walking out, there's 100% no chance that he's ever talking to Tony and probably doesn't like anybody in that room. Now, at the end of the day, if he actually was honest and was upset at what happened, it, it's fair. I do think it's a little bit of an overreaction, but that's his right and I don't think it was that bad. Now, if it's the case that he had somebody from his team in the crowd or in the back listening to what he was saying or what was going on, and then they told him to get out because of all the insane stuff that they were saying, then that gets a little bit more iffy because if that's the case, then him getting up, getting on the mic, and getting on a high horse is kind of cringe. I don't think that happened. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But yeah, overall, it was a great episode. I highly recommend you watch it from the start all the way to the end. It's definitely worth it. Obviously, the lineup was insane. Shane Gillis, Mark Norman, Ari Shafir, Louis J. Gomez, obviously, Tony Hinchcliffe, uh, Brian Radban, and um, it was a great show. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. Leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. Dislike if you didn't like the video. But that is all we have for today. See ya.